All right, good to have you with us joining us online or <laughs> later, whenever, um, a little late. Got a letter here to, I, I'd like to read from the Lawsons down in uh, Tampa. Uh, as we prepare my further resume and qualifications for full-time work, get the kiddos ready for school and take constant stock of how much further our finances can last, God has given some insight that has brought much peace. I've been working on additional uh, certificates to bolster my education. Uh, these certificates require FBI background checks and a high completion of a three-hour state proctored exams. Uh, my study skills have historically been excellent, so I found myself trusting in my intellect. My legal history has been clean, so I found myself trusting in my righteousness. My 21 years of experience as a business owner were largely successful. So I found myself trusting in my wisdom. All of these resume preparation and putting a best foot forward obviously has me thinking about competing with others for a job. Yet something inside would hold me back from dedicated forward progress. The kids are preparing to go to school. Uh, this time, armed with last year's experience and good grades, it is clear that through our support and the support of good teachers, the kids... Uh, find themselves trusting in themselves to do well. They have been blessed with new, quote-unquote, second-hand clothes and shoes and feel they will be equal in their peer group so that they trust in their social perception. Yet there is something of being a victim evident in little things in everyday life. We've been frugal with our support and blessed to be well taken care of. However, our expenses of a family of seven have been edging ahead of our income for some time. I find myself looking at the account and reasoning how much longer we are solvent. When I can see that we are good for a couple more months, I find myself trusting in the finances, yet returning to the same topic over and over in my mind, not finding rest. Then I was confronted by Philippians 3.3, 3, For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Here is a blessing that God has allowed that has brought much peace. The last year we spent in Tuvalu, we witnessed some terrible displays of humanity and we're having a hard time giving them to God. Upon returning to the States, we were inundated with constant news of unspeakable acts of barbarism committed by Americans, on Americans. It became a struggle to care about humanity at all especially when we would take into account our own shortcomings before a perfect God. From this framework, we start to develop a stronghold within our hearts of why bother? No need to describe the negative logic that can develop from there. Suffice it to say that I became my own worst enemy. Along the way, God would send little communications of love from many of you, sometimes in a quick text, sometimes through an additional love offering or a phone call. These kindnesses wreaked havoc on my attitude of humanity, but I would return to my anger and bitterness. Uh, we started attending a good church, largely because of the encouragement from our supporting churches. The preaching was good, but the people are people. The lesson that God is teaching me is that I have always had an element of trust in my flesh or the flesh of others. Our misplaced faith brought deep, insurmountable discouragement. What needed to be addressed in my heart and the hearts of my family was not the desperate wickedness, wickedness of man, but the placing of our faith, even just a tiny bit, in the flesh. Tuvalu is not great, but God is. America is not at its finest, but Jesus is. I have no righteousness, but the Holy Spirit does. A tiny bit of misplaced faith buried deep inside was damaging us. I believe it has been there all along. God is good to refine us and allow these things to be seen and confessed. We love God because he first loved us. Now we are relearning, or maybe learning for the first time, to love others because God first loved them. We can work to find a full-time job, prepare the kiddos for school, manage our finances. However, our faith cannot be in our flesh. It is a big deal to be able to love humanity again, including ourselves. Not because of ourselves, but because of God. If he so loved mankind, despite man's desperate wickedness, who am I to do otherwise? If he so loves me, despite my desperate wickedness, uh, whom I think he has another twice, sorry. Uh, I find this to be the most 
unexplainable and marvelous concept of God. My family and I have found that until we could learn this about where our hearts have been, we could not go forward. Every one of us anxiously awaits Sunday services and cannot wait to see what God does with work, school, and finances, but we know that whatever he does will be great. I wanted to share this with you so you can understand how absolutely vital your loving support of missionaries is, not just on the field, but also off the field. When you say you love missionaries, you have also proved it. Thank you. Love in Christ and Charlie and family. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I will, I know I've been praying, but I'll pray quick for the lessons before we jump into the word. Father, we uh, thank you for this letter from Charlie. We thank you for his transparency and, uh, Lord, the tendency um, that we all have to trust in the flesh. Uh, we uh, are to work, we're to labor, we're to do things, uh, and yet we're not to trust those efforts, but to trust in you. And so uh, I just thank you for him sharing his heart. I pray that you would help them as they uh, go forward and, and do the things that need to be done. Uh, Lord, he needs work, and uh, obviously the kids need to be ready for school, and they need uh, their uh, hearts uh, prepared and moved by you to um, grow in Christ and, and to be more loving, to be more forgiving. And, and uh, Lord, we just pray that you would help them. Uh, thank you for their, again, faithfulness and their transparency. And uh, Lord, for your word that helps each one of us see uh, not only our shortcomings, but the hope that we can have in Christ. And we pray in his name. Amen. Amen. Okay, Revelation chapter... We've been talking about, uh, last time we talked about the 144,000, uh, who they were, uh, when they were, the, so the, the events of the first three and a half years, we, we looked at two witnesses already, 144,000 in Revelation chapter 7, uh, again I'm just going to review quickly. I have a complex every time I say quickly for some reason. I don't know. Probably because when I say it, Deanna laughs at me. I think that's why. <laughs> but it, anyway, um, they when they were sealed was between the sixth and the seventh seal. So it was certainly in the first half of the tribulation. Uh, who are they? We have from chapter 7, verse 5, uh, or end of verse 4, there were sealed in hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So they are there are twelve tribes listed, twelve thousand from each one of those tribes. Uh, the significance, I think, of the tribes being listed is there. There are people that will try and spiritualize Israel, and they'll say, "Well, Israel is this, or Israel means that, or Israel is the church." Or, uh, and it's like, all right, God made it a point to list the names. Those are names of tribes. And to me, that just confirms it's a literal people from Israel. Uh, if you or they're Jewish people, if you do spiritual gymnastics with Israel, then you have to do that with the names of 12 tribes. And, and again, that's you're going to learn it if you already don't know it. If the plain sense makes sense, seek no other sense, right? That's the plain sense makes sense. No issue with God raising up 144,000 in the end times. Uh, how are they sealed? Verse 2, and I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. Verse 1 says four angels. Verse 2 says another angel making the fifth, uh, verse number three, the one angel, the fifth angel tells the four, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed. So I'm taking that to mean all five angels are involved in sealing of the 144,000. Uh, what the seal was, we don't know. Uh, I believe the Bible doesn't say it was visible, but I, I, think, I think it is visible. Um, certainly, you know, I think Louise pointed out last week, we have Ephesians 1.13 talks about us being sealed by the Holy Spirit, and that's not visible. Uh, 
physically, but it should be as we grow in Christ like this, it should be visible that we have the Holy Spirit in us. So again, that's, um, I, I think a lot of people lean towards it as a visible seal. Uh, in other words, you can see it, but we're not specifically told that. Um, what were they sealed from? The sealing uh, indicates ownership, and I think it also indicates security. And they, obviously, looking at the context, uh, four angels are going to go and start destroying the earth, and the fifth angel says, don't destroy till we seal. Well, it just makes sense that the sealing would protect those 144,000 from what was going to happen on the earth. And so I said we were going to compare the 144,000 in chapter 14 with the 144,000 in chapter 7, but I changed my mind. We're going to have to wait till next week. So if you studied and you got, you got it all figured out, remember it for next week. I want to do, I want to look at verse 9 again. Um, chapter 7, verse 9, after this, I'd be held, well, let me, let me give you something else first. Uh, Tim LaHaye, Revelation Unveiled, and uh, I, I would imagine all of you have heard of uh, Tim LaHaye. He says this, in, in this book he wrote, one of the most commonly, when, when he does a, uh, a conference on prophecy, one of the most common questions he is asked is, do you think there will ever be a worldwide revival? And he says, his response is, yes, but not as you think. And then he refers them to this verse, Revelation 7, verse 7. Nine, after this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. And then he makes this suggestion. He goes on to say, and you might have to mull on this for a while, he goes on to say that he believes more people will be saved during the tribulation than have been saved from this point back to the time of Christ. So all the people saved in the church age, he thinks is going to be less than the amount of people saved during the tribulation, based on this verse. And then he gives these reasons why. Uh, number one, the effects of the rapture on the world. The effects of the rapture on the world, uh, the 144,000 Jewish witnesses that are like the Apostle Paul, the Holy Spirit working like on the day of Pentecost, we talked about that a little bit last week, Joel chapter 2, uh, the chaotic conditions during the tribulation that are designed by God to shake humanity's false sense of security, and the fact that the world's largest population could be at that point. Um, and I want to I want to share some things. I, I, we're not going to go through all five of these in depth, uh, but I do want to. Um, we're looking at chapter seven, verse nine. This multitude that cannot be numbered. So I have a I have a meaningless. First of all, I have a meaningless Bible trivia question for you. It's pertinent, but it's really not all that. I mean, it's pertinent to our discussion. True or false? What? It can't be pertinent, but meaningless. <laughs> it can't be pertinent, but relevant at the same time. <coughs> all right. I always got to have a technical person in the crowd. <laughs> True or false? True. The word <laughs> million is in the King James Bible. False. Million? Million. False. It's a trick question. Genesis <laughs> chapter 24. Genesis chapter 24. You can keep your, we're coming back to Revelation a little bit. Genesis chapter 24. I'm, I'm like, 
I was looking at a concordance on something. I was looking at something, and I'm like, no way. No way. 24, verse 16. Verse 16. Yeah. Verse 16. Genesis, and they blessed Rebekah and said unto her, Thou art, Genesis 24, verse 16. And they blessed Rebekah and said unto her, Thou art our sister, be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let thy seed possess the gate. Huh? King James. No, King James says it. I don't... It's not even close. Are you in the King James? It doesn't matter. The okay, Genesis 24. 24. Oh. 60. 60. 60. Six zero. Oh, okay. Did I sound like 16? I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. Six zero. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thou art a sister, be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let thy seed possess the gate. So, think of that number. Think of that number. Thousands of millions. It's billions. Okay? Thousands of millions. Okay? <laughs> Revelation check. Okay, but is that a number? Yeah, mine says thousands of thousands. Okay, thousands of millions. Uh, Revelation chapter 5. And, and again, this is just fun, maybe. No, it's annoying, Pastor. But. <laughs> Revelation yeah, 5, study. verse 11. We all studied for last week. Now we got to go for this. Oh, uh, <laughs> you were prepared, okay. All right, well, keep it sharp for next week. Revelation 5, verse 11. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. The only reason I bring that up is that's a large number. Thousands of millions is a large number. But when John saw the multitude, it was not thousands of millions. It was already used once in the Bible. And it was not 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands like was already used in Revelation, it was a number that cannot be counted. And so, in my simple mind, that's a big number. If it's bigger than 10,000 times 10,000 plus thousands of thousands, that's that's a big number. Um, again, maybe I'm making bigger a big... Bigger than both of these. Huh? Bigger than both of these. Exactly, yeah. So, it, it, you know, maybe I'm Splitting a, what is well, straining at a gnat and swallowing a camel? or Yeah, you, know, you would have thought it would be more, you know, in Revelations and towards the end of the Bible, you know, millions, not in Genesis. Right, right. You know, because that's the beginning. But I guess, and in, in you're following the point, they give two big numbers, <laughs> yeah. obviously, but now they're saying it's bigger it's than, bigger. they cannot be numbered. So um, I, I think that kind of... Um, validates what Lahey is saying, that he thinks this number is going to be huge. Uh, the effect of the rapture, we've talked about this off and on, uh, but in, in, we have, you know, we've talked about, go ahead. Um, just to paraphrase the verse that says, uh, narrow is the way to salvation, or, or then why is it path to destruction? Is that talking about before the rapture or after? What, oh, um, so Matthew put seven, in, yeah. Puts in perspective on when it, if, if it's an error before the rapture, and it's wider, you know, multitudes can't be numbered after the rapture. Then they'll know that. If it's yeah, well, place. Jesus in Matthew seven. I mean, Jesus spoke it when he was on earth. So to put a, to, I, I think it was generally. I mean, I, I think the point, obviously, t literally two. You know the 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 way to heaven is narrow. It it is, Jesus made an exclusive claim. You get to heaven through me, or you don't get there. That's narrow. You know we're narrow minded. I tell people I'm narrow minded. I'm about this narrow. This about this thick. You know what the Bible says. Uh, but 
in an age when everybody's well, all roads lead to heaven. You're all as good as da da da. That's the broad way, and and I think so. The way to heaven is narrow, and I think big picture, Jesus is saying there will be more people in hell than heaven. But during the tribulation, there will be there's a lot of people right now. There's almost eight billion people in the world. I, I looked at this and uh, went online. And it's like we have gone from six billion in 2000 to 7.9, almost eight billion in the span of 21 years. We have jumped up two billion. And I, I can't remember. I saw the exactly. I mean, it took like a long time thousands of years to get to the first billion and then it just exploded after that so I, I think part of you know we can't even put our wrap our arms around seven billion uh or 7.8 billion but i think there are still jesus teaching it's a narrow gate but i think i think there are more still there are more i mean how many follow satan you know we we don't have a breakdown we don't um, we give the number, the multitude of, that are saved, but we don't hear about how many are damned. We don't, we don't hear that. So, but a lot of people don't realize that they are. Pardon me. That, that they're damned. You know, they they yeah. think that they're okay, that they're doing good. You know, a lot of people I hear, you know, too, is people say, "Well, if I'm doing the do's, then I don't have time for the don'ts." Well, that's mm -hmm. all right. Yeah, and you know, you you can see how there's I don't want I guess I want to be careful, but you know, there's there's some information available about I'll just say it, the shot. There's information available about the shot that many people are ignoring or choosing not to find, okay? And it's almost like, you know what? There's a lot of information right here, and people just don't want to hear it. They don't want to dig into it. They don't want to research it. They don't want to check it out. They want to believe. They want someone else to tell them what to believe. Just tell me what to believe. And we have the opportunity to look for ourself and we have the opportunity to research other things so uh, i think the facebook page will be dropped off momentarily here but uh um so the the effects of the rapture um although the antichrist and his followers will be delighted that the church has been taken out of this world many thoughtful individuals will be seriously impressed by the mysterious evacuation of millions of people. Well, and you just think of all the people that told people, like that movie we saw, and it happens in that. Okay, that. Thanks for giving that the closing. Be. Thanks for giving the closing comment at the middle. <laughs> 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 no, uh, so you brought tears to my eyes, wife. I can't read anymore. Um, man, it, uh, so the Antichrist and his followers were delighted that the church has been taken out of the world. However, many thoughtful individuals would be seriously impressed by the mysterious evacuation of millions. Uh, some have suggested, and I think rightly, that the rapture will leave its mark on humankind. Uh, consider for a moment what would happen if the rapture took place while Christian airline pilots were flying 747s or DC-10s loaded with people. Or think of the impact of humanity when hundreds of Christians, uh, train engineers and bus and automobile drivers are suddenly snatched from the control of their moving vehicles. Because Christians have invaded, he uses in 
invaded, because Christians have invaded almost every legitimate profession, the rapture will leave an unprecedented vacancy and cause the most chaotic and disruptive consequences that has ever been created by a single event. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Unprecedented vacancy of people uh, cause the most disruptive consequences that have ever been created by one event. Uh, yes, the world will be fully aware of the supernatural aspect of the rapture of millions from all over the world, particularly when they discover that the only common denominator of those raptured is their personal faith in Christ. And, uh, you know, we, we, we know that, we talk about, you know, we talk about leaving our, you know, hearing aids behind and hardware, our glasses and all those kind of things. But, um, you know, they, Louise was talking about, uh, we, we had watched a movie called Unidentified. And they were, it was, it was a book about, um, not a book, a movie. And I, I don't want to give you too much of it in case you watch it. So I, I'm, I'm not going to spoil it for you. But uh, it was a lot of talk about the rapture. And there was an antagonist that uh, he disliked Christians. And he would get in the face of Christians. And, and uh, he, after some people disappeared, he went up, he was frantic. And he went up to people and said, what if it's that rapture thing? What if it's that rapture thing? And he was, he was, he was moved. He was, it was in his mind that some people were mysteriously gone. And what if it was a, that rapture thing? And, um, you know, I got to, I got to thinking about that. And I'm like, I wonder if we talk about that rapture thing enough. Do people we know, if we're mysteriously gone, will they have a thought as to why? You know, if they do, it's because we have told them. Mm -hmm. If they don't, it's because we haven't. And I was, I was really challenged by that. I'm like, and I, I don't know if I said this before, um, I have not done it yet, but I have good intentions of writing a left behind letter that says in the, in, in the event of my mysterious absence, open this and explain what happened. You know, um, I, I haven't done it, but why wouldn't we do that? Why wouldn't we do that? You know, tape, I mean, hey, pill for the house. I don't care. I don't need it. I'm I'm gone. I'm gone. But, you know, I, I, was really, I was really challenged by it. We talk about a lot of things to people. Um, but Jesus is coming back. And people that aren't saved are going to be left behind. And people that are left behind, uh, you know, the more we study this, I, I hope you're being more and more in, impressed or having it more and more impressed upon your mind that... Uh, you know, there will be decision time. Right now, people can, let's be honest, people can sit on the fence right now. And people do sit on the fence right now. During tribulation, it's, it's one or the other. And it happens, I think, fairly soon, you know, during the tribulation where you're, and, and again, as a mark of the beast, the midpoint, we'll, we'll get into that more. But, um, you know, there are, there, you, you think of you, a non, imagine being a non-believer, but you have had believer friends and believer neighbors, and all of a sudden they tell you about this, hey, there's going to come a time when you're, I'm not going to be home, you know? And, wow, this person, and this person, and this person, and this person. And then, then oh, then, by the way, Revelation chapter 6, uh, look at verse 12, and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo there was a great earthquake sun became black as sackcloth of hair moon became as blood stars of heaven fell upon the earth even as a fig tree 
uh, casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. The heaven departs as a scroll when it's rolled together. Uh, drop down verse 15. Kings of the earth, rich men, great men, or great men, rich men, chief captains, mighty men, every bondman, every free man, hid themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. People are going to know that God is judging and God is doing stuff. And I, I think, you know, and that happens before this multitude. I mean, that's the, that's the sixth seal. Mm -hmm. uh, chapter 8, verse 1 is when the seventh seal is open. So chapter 7, so there are all these things, and, and that's why I am kind of was kind of intrigued by what LaHay said, is like all these things are going to really, and, and the fact that, you know, right now, if it was today, there'd be almost 8 billion people in the world. Uh, people will be forced to make a decision. And many will, when, when they see this, and so I, I guess I, I want to end with what I said just a couple minutes ago. I would really challenge us to learn to engage people in conversation about the rapture, about Christ coming back. Uh, what I mean, is there a better way to help them? Be, if, if they won't trust Christ now, is there a better way to prepare them by letting them know what's... I mean, think about it. Here's some Joe Schmuck neighbor that tells me all this crazy stuff, and all of a sudden, guess what? We, they think it's crazy stuff, and then all of a sudden, wow, I know Aunt Sally was... Uh, what are all these people? Well, some are going to believe UFOs took them. All right, well, you can believe that for a while, but anybody who's we have warned will, I would think, have this thought. So um, any, any questions, comments, Sharon? Um, I kind of was a little disappointed when you stopped reading. Oh. And, uh, yeah, it, you know, fall from us, hide from the face of him who sits on the throne from and the, from the wrath of the Lamb. Yeah. And for the great day of their wrath has come, and who can stand? Yeah. Because I believe from people that I've talked to, they don't see the wrath of the Lamb. Yeah. yeah. They think that they'll like love, 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 yeah. love, love. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And I'm like, have you guys not watched the news? Can you not see? Earthquakes in Tokyo and fire in California and floods here and you know and I'm like he's telling you people that he's not real happy right now and it's a way to punish his children you know I kind of believe and wake like, people up and but yep. wake them up and I think when the tribulation comes you know it's going to be. Holy buckets, she wasn't as crazy as I thought she was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Will you look what's going on? You know, and a lot of people are going to be um, the last on the on the way. You know what I mean? They're going to be like, oh, I have to believe or I'm not going to get, you know, transported. And I think that uh, that has something to do with something else that I <laughs> but uh, you know, yeah, and I I don't see because when you point out God's wrath, they refuse to believe it right. because they've been from little kids. You know, God is love. He is honesty. He is just. He is, you know, your protector. He's going to be. All omnipotent, omnipotent. There you yeah, go. Right that word. <laughs> that word. Oh, and uh, you know, people just yeah. Go well, ahead. I think they believe love is making the other person happy too. That's something. Yes. They think God is here to make them happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Not. They should yeah. read Ezekiel. Well, it's yeah. Jeremiah and those guys. They, should they said what the problem. wrath of God's going to be. Yeah. But they won't. But they won't. And, and we, you know, I, I, I like to challenge people like that to, 
you know, our our sense of even even a, a, a lost person's sense of justice is, mm-hmm. wait a minute, that person killed someone and they were guilty and they were caught and there's no punishment. Mm-hmm. You know, that bothers them that there's no punishment. So they understand there's a need for judgment. They just don't understand how holy God mm-hmm. is and they don't think their sinfulness is that bad. That's, you know, one of the big problems of, one of the many problems of mankind is our heart is so deceitful, we don't even, we don't think sin's that bad. Mm-hmm. Now, yours might be, but mine's not. You know, I mean, that's that's just the way we After think. After all, and, I haven't killed anybody. I'm mm-hmm. just going to do the murder. Yeah. 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 But yeah. The, the justice the, part. The people that say that, though, that the other guy ought to get punished and everything else, if it was them, then they would say they shouldn't, they shouldn't get you know, that's the way people are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't punish me, but that guy, he needs to be punished, yeah. you know. There was a thing on the news tonight where two black young people broke into a white man's house and started to ransack it, and he came out with a shotgun, and he shot and killed them both. The mother of those two young men is suing the guy that shot them. And I'm like, what happened to raising your children for respect? And that there's a whole generation out there that there is no respect. And if people think that it's going to go back to Opie and Aunt B and all that (laughs) other stuff, they're sadly (laughs) mistaken. Exactly, yeah. that's exactly yeah. what you were saying, and I got tonight the news with hmm? the like permit being in his pocket. Yeah. But my boys were good. All right, I'm going oh, to yeah. close in prayer and mm-hmm. sign off here. Thank you, those of you, for joining me. Oh, my wife got me with the Clippers, for those of you wondering out there. <laughs> yeah. No, not really. See, there's not even anybody on at this point. This was VA, okay, in case you were curious. <laughs> All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for... Your word, and Lord, we uh, are amazed when we think of uh, the multitude uh, that will be saved. And Lord, we uh, realize and recognize that there are certain parts of the world that um, the name of Jesus has not been heard. Uh, Some don't have it in their uh, language, uh, have the Bible in their language. And and, uh, Lord, we, we certainly believe that many of them, when they see what's going on and they uh, hear the gospel for the first time, will uh, repent. And uh, Lord, we just pray that you would help us to be uh, affected by what we're learning. Uh, That Lord, uh, we would take seriously the responsibility that we have to warn uh, our friends and loved ones that there is a time coming. It could be in our lifetime, certainly could be uh, at any uh, moment. And, and the signs, uh, even though there aren't any technically, there's a lot of things pointing to the return of Jesus. And so uh, we pray that you'd help us to be bolder and braver and more burdened about uh, warning people that there will come a time when Christians will be taken out of this world and that uh, we would teach them what happens and so that uh, they would know that it's the rapture thing that some people talk about and and the lord we just thank you that we have the truth of your word and the lord again we just thank you for this time to uh, study it and be challenged by it we pray in jesus name amen Amen. good night everyone thanks again for those of you joining us online or listening later